Bigelow Aerospace 10 month report. Now, guys, I've now been exonerated because I said I saw this document like a year ago. I didn't read all 500 pages. I had like an hour with this document. Uh, and now the full document has leaked. And I said it was way longer than it was. And yeah, it's way longer. I didn't even remember, but this one's 500. I don't remember which of these I saw or how much of it I saw. But whatever, this document just leaked. This document's from July 30th, 2009. Bigelow Aerospace. If you guys are not familiar with Bigelow Aerospace because you're like a normal person that doesn't know about all this UFO stuff, Bigelow Aerospace, this guy Robert Bigelow, he's connected to Skinwalker Ranch. He's connected to Hal Pudoff and all these engineers and scientists. Bigelow, he's like obsessed with UFOs. He's deep in this stuff, and he's been getting contracts with the government to research this stuff. And so this document is not made up. It's not a hoax or a scam. It's a real document. I know because I saw it way before this. So the question we should be asking is, why does this document exist? And what were they looking at in 2009? 2009 is 16 years ago. That is a long time ago. 16 years ago. So I started scrolling through this document, and it is really long. The creation of Bass, the organization, the infrastructure. And this is why I said, when I said, what was my recollection of the document? My recollection of the document was like, it was like an onboarding guide. It was like, a, here's a high overview of what we do. The first thing that piqued my interest was project physics. 2C, progress on nine committed bass projects. What kind of physics do you think that this 2009 document, remember, the time of this document is very, very, very important. This document's from 2009. This document is just a few years after all the Air Force Research Lab scientific papers that we've found. The ones about ball lightning, teleportation, air breathing magnetohydrodynamics, dense plasmas are all from the early to mid 2000s. This document's from 2009, the end of the 2000s. So what are we going to find, you guys think, when we lo go look at these scientific papers? Well, what is there going to be in the physics section of this? Let's find out. Well, well, well. What is this? We haven't even got there yet. Earth Tech International. I know Earth Tech International. That's Hal Pudoff's company. That's Hal Pudoff and Eric Davis. That's what Earth Tech International is. Four contracts and agreements have been awarded to Earth Tech to provide 12 overview papers of the Bass technical areas, letters of engagement with Dr. Pudoff, work on directed projects as specified by Bass Administrator, effective January 5th, 2009. Purchase agreement for 24 to 30 position papers that will be based on the Bass technical areas. I know what they're talking about now. Now I know what they're talking about. That's talking about the DIRDs. That's talking about the defense intelligence reference documents. The scientific papers that I said are the most important scientific papers on the planet. That's what that's talking about right there. Progress on project physics. Number one, state-of-the-art evolution of high-energy laser weapons. Now you're talking my language. What else you got for me? Space communication implications of quantum entanglement and non-locality. That's the double slit experiment. Now you've got my attention. Let's continue. Space access, where we've been, where we need to go. Professor Paul Sizz. Keep going. Anti-gravity for aerospace applications in 2050. Eric W. Davis. Traversable wormholes, stargates, and negative energy. Eric W. Davis. 
Uh, let's skip that one. Let's skip that one. On the role of superconductors in gravity research, George Hathaway. Maverick Inventors, George Hathaway. Metallic Glass. These are the dirds. All of these are the dirds. These are the defense intelligence reference documents. These are the papers. Theories and experiments for invisibility cloaking. I read that when I was talking about this last week. I was talking to Tim Pool about this. Do you know what the best form of invisibility is? Bending space-time around you like a black hole. That's the best form of invisibility. And that's what it says in this paper. Let's keep going. The Drake Equation. The IEC, which is Inertial Electrostatic Confined Confinement, for fusion power and spin off applications, Dr. George H. Miley. Yahtzee! Yes! Holy sh! We hit the mother load chat. It's all been there the whole time. There it is. All the dirds that explain the orbs. The inertial electrostatic confinement of George Miley. He was the co-author with Frank Mead on the dense plasma fusion focus paper. The one that talked about the gigawatts of excess energy. The one that talked about using, using lasers coming off of it for gravity waves and all this stuff. This was the guy. We have nailed it. Holy sh! These papers were not declassified for almost 10 years after this. This was classified until 2017, until three years after the videos were published. The videos were published for years before anyone knew these papers existed. And there they are. These were not hypothetical papers that they just were like, Oh, we should just imagine what the future will be like. No, they knew exactly what they were doing. They knew exactly what they were building. They literally created a time capsule. They created a time capsule and they wrote all the Black Project stuff they learned. They wrote it into the dirds. They wrote it into the dirds and they released it. That was their way of getting disclosure to us. The Defense Intelligence Reference Documents, also known as the DIRDS, the DIRDS. Jay Stratton, the very first thing I did when I heard that person that leaked that Bigelow document, the person that leaked that document, or at least the first images of it, said that Jay Stratton is gatekeeping and he has been preventing people from getting labs built out. And when I heard that three weeks ago, the first thing I did was call Salvatore Pais. I called Salvatore Pais so fast, you guys wouldn't even believe it. First thing I did, I picked that phone up. I said, did Jay Stratton, was he the guy that made sure you didn't get your thing? And do you know what his answer was? Yes. Heart and soul of OSAP was those technology areas. And the heart and soul of those technologies areas of pre preventing a disruptive technology. Now you tell me what you hear there. That's Jay Stratton you're looking at right there. I've already found one clip. It sounds like he's saying the goal of OSAP, which is what that document we were just looking at led to that Bigelow document, that Bigelow project led to OSAP that this guy was in charge of. It sounds like he just said, preventing disruptive technologies the heart and soul of osap was those technology areas and the heart and soul of those technologies areas is pre preventing a disruptive technology these guys are hiding free energy from us they've got plasma orbs that can fly around in the sky and produce gigawatts of excess energy literally would just end the energy crisis on planet earth forever and they found out how to teleport things with them and they decided they're gonna keep that from us that we don't deserve that 
that we're too lowly for that technology. That is actually wild, especially since we literally pay their salaries, literally pay their salaries, or at least those contracts are coming from the government. That means that's taxpayer money. Disruptive technology. That's what they call it, guys. That's the gaslighting they do, by the way. They call it disruptive technology because saying that it's free energy doesn't quite have the same ring. So instead of calling it free energy for the world forever, we call it disruptive technology. <laughs> That's what they do with words, right? Is that you take the uh, neuro-linguistic programming, you take the positive aspect of free energy, you go, no, 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 it's not free energy. It's disruptive technology, y'all. Disruptive technology. I decided to look George Miley up and found out he's still alive. But what really surprised me when I got into this, cold fusion and low energy nuclear reactions. He has a whole section on low energy nuclear reactions. Miley has investigated nuclear transmutations and thin films of metals based on earlier work supported by clean energy technologies. Miley is also active in, on low energy nuclear reactions. After his retirement, he participated in the World Green Energy Symposium. During the symposium entitled Cold Fusion, a discussion, Miley reported that he had constructed a low energy nuclear reaction device that continuously produces several hundred watts of power. What? How is this just randomly in this guy's Wikipedia? Are you kidding me? He's got a free energy cold fusion device? Produces hundreds of watts of excess energy? Literally, like Nathaniel Hanks said, it's, it's an open secret. It's actually just ridiculous at this point. And by the way, he's also out here just writing defense intelligence reference documents, literally about electrostatic confinement fusion. So, wow. I want to read a little bit of this one because this one gets me really excited. Like, yes, and I should, I do think whoever just said Putoff replaced Teller. I agree, guys. I, I, Putoff is the number one gatekeeper right now. Like the fact that somebody like this is writing papers for Putoff, for Bass, we've figured out the power structure. Like there's not anybody above Putoff. I mean, who are Putoff's friends? If they're, if he's got somebody above him, it's one of his friends. Okay. It is shown that an IAC is a unique approach to fusion and that it offers a number of spin-off applications, such as a neutron source for neutron activation analysis, whatever that means, on the route to fusion power. Um, it shows that due to its characteristic non-Maxwellian plasma dominated by beam-like ions, do you know what that means, chat? That means cold plasmas, non-equilibrium plasma. That's what he's talking about right there. I would not have even understood these scientific papers even one year ago. But that's what this means. Somehow I know that now. It can potentially burn aneutronic fuels like PB. I don't know what that means. I forget. That ability, combined with its simple mechanical structure, simple monostructure, we might say, and small size, makes the IEC reactor, if achieved, an ideal fusion power unit. Present experimental devices are four to five orders of magnitude below break-even energy for PB. However, it is argued that the ability to study the physics in a very small volume plasmas makes it possible to rapidly investigate scale up to a power producing device. As an example, the report concludes with a conceptual experiment proposed for demonstration of break even conditions using a hydrogen plasma simulation. That is the orbs. That is the orbs. That is the fusion reactor inside the orbs that he's talking about right there. 
<laughs> IEC fusion, guys. Memorize it. Inertial electrostatic confined fusion. That is what they're doing with the plasma orbs. Boom.